everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is our review of the Wonderful Dex 4, our first four-seater on the channel. We're really excited to test it out for you guys and give you all the insider info on what it's like to use this baby, things that you won't see from just looking at the website and trying to get a gauge on what the heck is going to work for my family. We're going to give you the insider information on what we found from our user experience. Um, we're going to cover everything back to front like we always say. Maneuverability is going to be in there as well and kind of like the durability. So hopefully this will be useful for you and uh, we'll try our best to give you great information. So the first thing that I like about the W2 I think is one of my favorite um, unfolds of any stroller wagon ever. It's the easiest thing. Literally I'm just going to pinch the clasp. So for me, minimal effort is great. So that to me is like a really big benefit. Obviously, if you're on about with kids, you know, it's really nice to not have to do so much fussing around with that. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, we'll start from the front and work our way back as we normally do. First thing that I'll talk about is this handlebar here. Overall, I'm gonna give it like eight out of 10, maybe. Um, I like it for the most part. I really like that it has one. Those are one of my favorite features um, when they do have one of those. It's really easy to like pull up and then when you pull it out it has like the bouncing feature so in a way it's it's pretty adjustable to your height preferences because it will come down with you and then when you don't have it in your hand it'll kind of bounce back up so it's not just going to hit the floor or whatever like that you know it, it is spring loaded um so i do i do like the handle i do wish that it was a little sturdier if you can see here like it doesn't, it's not like the strongest thing ever. And then if you're looking at the connection points to the actual wagon itself, it's pretty skinny and pretty thin. So there have been times where I've been trying to pull it up over something and it didn't feel like the sturdiest thing ever. Um, but it's easy to use. There's two different ways. You can kind of push down on this lever here or you can push this way on this lever here and it'll drop down. Something that I do wish is when it was in this like locked mode like this, I prefer to go to the front over here and go up the curb by pulling it up because pushing it on that side is just like not a good idea, especially when there's a lot of weight in it. So by coming over here, when I'm gonna pull it up a curb, it doesn't stay in place. It's not really locked. It'd be nice if there was like a release lever of some kind here so that it would stay in place until I compress that on purpose. Um, but when I go to use it, it pulls this thing up. So you have to really, you know, it comes all the way up to, um, to come up over the curb, which is not like a huge deal, but other than that, I mean, it's got like this ergonomic design or whatever you would call it for the fingers and for a comfortable handhold. So overall, I think it tucks away really nice um, and it's a great pull option. I, I much prefer it to the ones that just have kind of like a double one of these. To me, this is not really a pull option. It's not very comfortable for my usage. So this is a really nice feature. Um, for otherwise, from the front, uh, the front tires, uh, I like that they're really easy to come off. Uh, a lot of times roller wagons, they don't have that option at all, or it's really, really hard. So the fact that these are really convenient and easy to come off, um, you're just gonna, where's that little lever? Just like a silver lever. It's like, oh yeah, see? Super, super easy to do. Um, so you're just gonna mess with that, it's gonna pop right off. So that's a, one of my favorites as well. Uh, moving on to the inside of the stroller wagon, if you don't mind accompanying me. Uh, something that I usually really like and, and will mention in my videos is that this has an optional three to five point harness, which is really, really great because sometimes with smaller kids, you're definitely going to want that five point. Or if you have, you know, a kid with like medical needs or something, they have, um, you know, core issues, trunk control issues, having the five point is critical. So this has, uh, you know, adjustment you can do on the shoulders, but it also has adjustment that you can do on the harnesses and it comes with the covers, which is really great. Uh, something that you can also note in here is that there is no internal storage. A lot of times stroller wagons do have pockets so kids can put, you know, snacks and things like that. So you're going to have to buy some kind of like aftermarket options. But the thing that also kind of stinks too is that because this is just fabric and there's no bar underneath, a lot of times you need a bar to hold on like a brick, a snack pod, um, accessory or something like that. So you can add on cup holders, snack cups, you know, that kind of thing. This doesn't have that. So it's gonna be a little trickier to find accessories that work with this kind of a, a body. Um, but you know, that's just something that I've noticed. Uh, another thing 
about the inside is that I haven't seen any or many makers that are doing like liners for this. So as of right now, to my knowledge, this is as soft as it's going to get, unless you're like, you know, a skilled seamstress or whatever like that at home and you know how to make a liner custom for this, like that would be really great, but it's not the most padded, you know? So if comfort is like a really big thing, I don't know where you would go to buy a liner for this unless you make it yourself or go to a seamstress or something like that. Um, something that is really cool though, is that these seat backs, this is like a mat. You can see this whole thing is shifting inside. This is removable. So this seat mat thing, you can just take the seats right out and then you don't have the harnesses or whatever like that. Although they are sewn, like this one is sewn into the bottom. So it would still be there, but you wouldn't be using it. Like you can just use it like a wagon. You know, it can just haul a bunch of stuff for you. So if you have sporting, you know, or something like that for your kids and they're not young enough to sit inside anymore, or they're kind of outgrown it, you can still use it as a great wagon. So if you're going to the beach or whatever like that and you just like don't need the seats or whatever it is, I like that it's customizable and that it has that option to add longevity to, you know, your purchase. You're gonna get the most bang for your buck. Um, something that I think was also pretty ingenious over here on the side on the frame is that Wonderfold has thought about this self-advertising. So not only do they have their name and their brand here, but they have this QR code. So I don't know about you guys, I have been out of the house many, many, many a time with one wagon or another or a stroller and been asked, what is that? Where do I get that? You know, I really like that. And by whoever else. And there's so many times I wish I had a business card or something like that to hand out. Wonderful has thought that through. They slapped a QR code on the side there so that if you can, you know, obviously you talk to parents and explain things to them, but you can just have them scan that and it takes them to the Wonderful site. So that's a pretty smart way to directly get people to your site and getting looking at your products. So I think that that's pretty darn smart there too. Um, working our way to the back here, I will comment on this handlebar. Uh, you know, it's kind of just your standard, you know, um, handlebar here. You have to push the two buttons on the side. This is what most of the stroller wagon handles tend to look like, especially, you know, like this kind, Keens, Wonderful, you know, that kind of thing. They're kind of like this adjusting, um, pivoting type handlebar. I do like that it has this like leatherette or pleather or whatever this is cover that you can uh, zip off. And then underneath is just kind of like this weird like rubber thing, but you can replace it, you know, if you want to jazz up your wagon and personalize it, you can do that. It does have this fancy red stitching, so it does match with the rest of the stroller wagon, which is really cool. Um, but other than that, I don't find it to be too strong. It's, you know, I mean, this type is just not that strong in general, the construction of it. You don't want to hang too much weight off of here. Like I had said, um, even with two seaters, I'm not crazy about putting a lot of weight on here when going over curbs and just shoving it down. But with a four seater, you're going to want to be even more careful. Uh, so I generally do go to the other side and just pull up when I'm going over curbs because pushing down on this is not a good feeling. It's kind of rickety feeling. So just be aware of that. Um, since we have the storage basket tucked away right now, I will go ahead and talk about the brake. I'm kind of, I like the brake to be honest. It's like just a round bar. So it's, it's not going to hurt. There's no edges to get caught on or, you know, anything like that. Very foot friendly, no matter your shoe uh, of choice. So it's not the strongest brake ever, really. If you watched my unboxing video uh, toward the end, you'll see that. But I mean, it gets the job done and it's very easy to use. Uh, another con I would say for curb hopping is look at this bar. Look at this rear support axle bar or whatever it is. This is not something you wanna put your foot on. One, it's not super easy because you have to go underneath the brake. But two, this is not gonna give you really good support and help and lift going over the curb. So in general, just 10 out of 10, I would not recommend like using the curb from this end. Just go over there. Um, on, on the other side of things here, like the tires I was telling you about in the front, I like how easy they are to come off. These are also very easy. You push this button and they come right off and it's incredibly easy. I do want to also give like a compliments to Wonderful because these tires are better quality than a lot of the stroller wagon tires you're gonna see that are just like on any standard stroller wagon. Even the ones that advertise all terrain, Jeep is infamous for this. Those are just like a light foam. The little tread is just to draw you in. It doesn't do anything and it wears away the second it touches the pavement. So these are more rubberized. It is still the foam, but it's definitely more heavy duty. We have used this, you know, for a while now and the tread is still here. 
and they're definitely just a better quality of tire, I would say. So like, I'm, I, I like the baby trend wagons, and but those, the tires are kind of more like the Jeep tires. So certain ones, you know, have definitely invested more money into the tire construction. These are good, which is helpful because, you know, it does have the pole handle. You're gonna wanna use this on different terrains. We're taking it to the beach later. So we'll let you know how that goes in our next beach comparison video. But uh, investing more in the tires is definitely gonna help with the push. It's gonna help with how all terrain it really is. And so my compliments to Wonderful on that. Um, next, we will go ahead and talk about the storage bag. So it tucks away very compact, very discreet. If you don't wanna have it down, I really, really like that because a lot of the truly wagon options at the market don't have that. So this is a pretty unique feature. Um, it has this little Velcro and then you pull it down from here and uh, it's gonna release from these side pegs and come down. We did notice when we were putting it together, doing the unboxing, that the zipper here is not very strong. It doesn't really stay in place. So my husband went ahead and did this little zip tie hack that we talked about in that unboxing video. Um, so if you have one of these and you wanna learn that, just go to the end of our video and you can see it there. Uh, as far as the actual basket and what I think of it itself, it says to only put 10 pounds of things in here. So to me, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it could probably take more than that, but you have to guess on how much you want to, you know, play around with that. Um, I like this little, this little sucker kind of tucks away if you, if you don't want it out and about, which is nice. You can just have the open basket. It is pretty roomy. It's not super deep, um, but it is definitely wide and it gives you, I mean, you could totally fit a diaper bag and more stuff in here. So it's got decent storage in the storage basket itself. Uh, and I do like that it does tuck away and it doesn't protrude too much into your foot space. So you're not going to be kicking it. I mean, unless you're very tall or if you have a very long stride or something like that. But I also do like the fact that you can close it. I mean, I'm a very like security minded person and I'm very aware that people want to take your stuff. So being able to close it if you'd like to is definitely an advantage. And uh, being able to tuck it away is one of my favorite features about that. So my two cents on the storage basket now we will go ahead and cover the canopy and so we're going to do that in a separate clip because i have to go get it so let's talk canopy i don't think i've ever had as mixed feelings about a canopy as i do with this uh i i it reminds me of you know like a keens or a jeep canopy but the advantages of those are that they have built-in coverage that are, you know stays inside of under the lip and you can bring it down as you as you wish this has nothing built inside. So this is kind of what you get. Now we have come up with some, I don't know if anybody else has, don't take that as like, oh, I'm the inventor. But like, you know, just through user experience, we have kind of found ways to make it work for us that are, you know, more customizable. So this is like the standard height. If you pull it all the way up, this is how it, how it looks. Um, but my husband, had, you know, smart idea that, that if the sun is in different positions or something like that, you can lower it down to kind of customize the height. I'm, I'm good. So if you kind of push down, I mean, you're going to want to loosen them up if you want to, or you can just kind of push them down. They're not like really stuck in place when they're fully engaged anyway, but you can lower this down to get either lower coverage for like different levels of sun or you can bring it kind of all the way down almost and it will give you not exactly like a it will give you not exactly like full coverage but darn close to it you know i mean there will be some rays here and there that can get in but this is a good setup for nap this is as good as you're going to get on the x4 to my imagination you could slap a couple of fans in there and you would have like pretty decent um Nap coverage, like on this side from the front and the back, you're not gonna get any sun in. It's really just gonna be on the sides. So I think that that's pretty cool, actually. Um, that, was, that was like a really good idea. The thing I also like that they don't advertise, as we uh, talked about in our last W4 or X4 video, is this. Come on. So. <laughs> little sounds. I imagine if I was struggling with this in the parking lot somewhere or something, that little sound would, you know, just brighten things up a little bit. 
The poles don't really stay in place that well. As you can see, you can just push them up and down. So not super fond about that. And then we get to the worst part, which is this. When you want to put it away, like the Jeep one, I like better for the folding design in the sense that it has the poles built onto it and it folds like an umbrella. So it kind of folds it on itself and then you can tuck it away in one of the pockets. This is just here. There's not like, the, the poles don't have a fold to them. So you're just kind of like packaging it up as best you can. Like one of those, you know, like those tents that you fold up, but like the second you let it go, it's just gonna, like that's exactly what this is. And so it's like, you look kind of foolish, you know, in the parking lot or something like that, trying to get your life together with this. But I mean, it's, you can find a way to kind of squish it up. And my husband was able to find a way to like fold it and then, and then you can shove it like in here and obviously closing the top will keep it from doing this number so that's kind of nice I guess and then you can put stuff like on top of it like there's a little bit of space left in there still so it has it technically I guess it has a storage space for where it goes but like on the Jeep there's storage here and storage there I guess it's kind of different because this has a pole handle but in any case, it does eat up a lot of your storage basket. So you got to find kind of like other ways of adding storage to this. Otherwise, you're not going to have much space. And that canopy fold is... I've never seen anything like that. But uh, with with the poles here, what you're going to... What you do is you, you twist this bottom part to bring it up or down. And we've just found it a lot easier to just never take this off. <laughs> So you just tighten it as you please or loosen it or whatever, and then you slip this sucker back on there. So just don't ever undo the Velcro ever, and your life will be better. Um, when it comes to the fold, it's not as easy as the unfold, but whatever it could be. So you just come to the center here and like pull it up, which is exactly, you're just gonna pull it. And then there's a clip here. And then there's another clip here. See, I'm kind of pinning it with my leg on this side to keep it from falling um, the other direction to open back up. And then you clip it and then it's done. So it's really not a big deal. It's pretty easy to do. And, um, and then that's done. And then they comes with this, like a travel bag or a storage bag or something like that. And I think that's actually really nifty because a lot of them don't. A lot of them just straight up don't come with something like this. So, I don't think I'm going to try and get this on by myself right now. I can't vouch for how easy it is. To be honest. But, I like that that's an option. Um, finally, I think what I do want to talk about is the maneuverability, you know, push. It's pretty basic. I mean, that's what people really a lot of times care about because if if it can take four kids, but it's really hard to push, you don't want to take four kids, you know? So the fact that this is a four seater is really nice. Um, it does fit through my front door pretty easily actually. And it's not as wide as I would think it would be. It folds very compact, very compact. Whether you compare it to a two or a four seater, it has an incredibly compact fold. Tires come off really easy. So, I don't know if I'd ever give a 10 out of 10, but like, man, it's close. This is a really great fold. Um, but as far as maneuverability goes, it's it's pretty decent. Um, I've This is my first four-seater that we've had on the channel. And I have noticed that sometimes going over like really bumpy terrain and things like that, if the tires lift off of the ground on one side, it seems to be more prone to kind of like tipping. I don't, I don't know why that would be. I mean, I, you know, just a design thing, but it, it, so you have to be a little bit careful on that front, but I mean, it seems to be very capable of tackling sidewalks, uneven sidewalks, you know, things like that. It does well. I would say it even does better than some of the longer options, like the Larktail. Definitely does better than the Jeep. So as far as like neighborhood walks and things like that, going over rough-ish sidewalks and terrain, it did pretty well. Um, it did just as well on the grass as anything else. Pavement, you know, so it definitely went up over curbs and uh, like driveways and stuff like that better than the jeep so overall i think it's a really 
great option with maneuverability. It's not going to be like a high end push. If you're used to like a bugaloo stroller, you know, don't, don't get this and think it's going to be the same, but you know, for stroller wagons, as far as they go, I am impressed with the tire quality and that absolutely um, affects, you know, the push and how it feels in your hands and everything like that. So as far as that goes, it does pretty well, especially for a four seater. So I'll make a final note now about the maneuverability. Um, something that we just talked about and that, you know, really struck a chord with me is that for being a four seater, this is actually very well maneuverable. We have had two seaters like the Lartail that were definitely, you know, on the skinnier than this, but longer. And we found that through use, pushing something like that over uneven terrain or something like that feels more, it feels less maneuverable almost than this because it is a little bit shorter, but wider, you have more control. Um, and I think actually it does make a big difference too that a lot of the four seaters on the market, like the W4, um, the W4 2.0 with the canopies and all the seats on it and stuff like that, or the canopy is, is 72 pounds. So this is significantly lighter than some of the other four seater options in the market right now. Uh, and it's, it's more affordable and all that jazz, but I think that this is a great stroller wagon uh, for a lot of families. Definitely if you're looking for something more budget friendly than you know something like that, or if you have a medical condition that would keep you from being able to lift 72 pounds by yourself to get in and out of the car, you know, this is a really, really something to consider. Um, but that is going to be the end of our video. Uh, I really hope that it is helpful to you. I uh, try to, you know, think through a lot of the things that you wouldn't get to know just by looking at a picture on a website and give you kind of my two cents on it. Um, we're gonna be doing a comparison with this one against the Pronto and the Jeep. Um, and I think the Jeep and this one are strangely like very comparable. Uh, the Jeep is kind of one of the bigger in size on the inside, even though it's you know advertised as a two seater. So I think that it's gonna be a really good comparison and I hope that it's helpful. A lot of times in those videos, you know, it's, it's a lot more focused on the details, the, the dimensions, you know, weight limits and things like that. So if you're looking for that kind of information about the X4, uh, please keep an eye out for the comparison video because this is more about user experience. This is more the hands-on stuff that you're not gonna learn from looking at the website. And then when we do the comparison video, I do all the research on the website to give it to you. And then I also take it out to different terrains so I can tell you how it feels going on grass, sand, blah, 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 etc. different places. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel so you can stay tuned for all the videos that we have coming up. We're going to be doing a beach comparison with this as well, so you will get to see it on the deep fluffy sand. Um, and thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.